Wonderful good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and again, it's commodity time. We are here in Munich, and uh, today we have Brian Henry here, the broker of the year 2013 from PI Financial, directly from Vancouver, and he's giving us an insight into the markets. And of course, we want to talk about some commodities, some metals, and see how is it going there. Brian, thank you very much for being here and taking the time to talking to us. Um, yeah, first of all, we went through some really shaking times, I would say the last two years, it was quite horrible. You are working directly in the heart of the junior mining industry in Vancouver. And uh, yeah, what is the status there? What's the atmosphere? Well, if, um, if I had to call it one word, I'd say it's a crisis. And definitely it, it's, it's parallel in Vancouver is probably 2008, 2009 in the United States, the financial crisis, the housing market. We're seeing uh, an asset class, which is junior mining stocks and gold equities that have dropped as much as 70 to 75, up to 80%. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing 700 companies on the TSX Venture Exchange that are underfunded and probably don't have enough money to last till the end of the 700. year. 700. 700 okay. on the TSX. And roughly, I believe that's about uh, a quarter to one third of the companies listed on the exchange. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely viewing it as a crisis. Um, one thing you know, I'll impress upon everybody is that we are looking for change and we are looking to make changes. Um, myself, I'm working very closely with uh, the exchange itself and the regulatory bodies mm -hmm. to uh, uh, change policy and mm -hmm. try and move this forward. Um, what, what, what do you mean by changing the policies? Well, we're looking for, for ways for um, uh, you know, these 700 companies so, uh, to give themselves new ways of funding mm -hmm. uh, that are, are, are cheaper perhaps less expensive um, and a little bit faster than the traditional mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I, I, it's, it's an emergency time mm -hmm. right now. You know, we mm -hmm. are in crisis and in yeah. crisis you have to act fast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I would suggest that um, the regulations themselves will take longer to fix than um, you know, what can happen internally within the companies. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, part mm -hmm. of the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. So that means that 700 companies are, yeah, below $200,000 cash or whatever. They won't survive until Christmas if there's not a, a miracle, a wonder or whatever. Um, how are you working these days? Uh, because uh, I did a bit, uh, a bit research about your company. Yeah. You are very healthy. You are very well uh, settled if I look at the balance sheet and everything. Um, so what, what is behind that success? How are you investing? What ways of funding are you doing? How are you acting in such a crisis as a broker, as a funding house? Well, as a broker, um, I'm looking for opportunities, mm -hmm. really. And I, mean, I feel very fortunate to work for a company uh, such as PI Financial because we have a very healthy balance sheet. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of free cash on the balance sheet, and uh, we're actively seeking new opportunities daily. We've got great analysts. We've got a great corporate finance department, mm -hmm. and uh, we're out there just, you know, in this crisis looking for opportunities. And I think out of this crisis, I think it's probably going to be some of the best opportunities we've seen in probably in the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you make a guess how long this crisis could last? Ooh, Not easy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, it's tough. Every, everybody asks me that, but uh, you know, usually a crisis ends when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was looking at was a big high volume day in those those junior resource stocks and those gold equities. And we saw last Thursday, I believe it was, we saw a very, very high volume day. I think it was uh, uh, the second to last day of the month. So mm -hmm. second to last day of the quarter. Mm -hmm. And we saw rebalancing in the S&P TSX and we saw rebalancing in the Russell mm -hmm. index, the small cap index yeah, in the United gold States. Too. Yeah. Right. And what happened uh, literally was we saw a lot of these gold stocks and you know junior mining companies get actually kicked out of those indexes and therefore ETFs and all these funds that hold them based on the index mm -hmm. had to sell. And we saw a huge flush. I think the day alone was down 6% for mm -hmm. that asset class, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the gold equities itself. And if we looked to the next two or three days, we saw a huge relief rally. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. saw, I think it was B2 Gold that we mm -hmm. saw was up 50% yes, yes. within two, two days. days yeah. We saw um, the day after New Gold was up 15%. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's what it is, is an exhaustion of selling. You know, yeah. there's, there's you know, less sellers that mm -hmm. we see out there. And it's, it's not, it's gonna take time to mm -hmm. heal. And the, the junior resource market as a whole, it might take years to heal. You know, and mm -hmm. I can't tell you whether it's one or two or three or five. Um, we've been coming down, you know, from the top since 2011. Mm -hmm. And from 2011 to today, it's been roughly over two years mm -hmm. since we've seen the peak. How would you rate today now the markets? Are they totally undervalued? Or is it more like in a panic mode? Um, do you think a uh, company like Barrick, for example, $15 billion of debt, are they still cheap or are they in trouble, for example? How, how do you rate this now? Because to my understanding, I think we have a lot of good companies out there, 
paying dividends, of course, also, which to my view are cheap, but I thought this six months before also, and now we are 30% more down. Yeah. So what, what is your guess about that? Well, it's, again, it, it almost becomes a guess. And I, I, I look at the balance sheets of these companies, and you look at something like Barrick, and yeah, they are uh, carrying a lot of debt at mm -hmm. the moment. And, and I think a lot of people will probably question some of the moves the management made. They've had to take large write downs. Um, I think a lot of the worst has happened, though. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you look at a company like Berg, it's been around a long time, and it will mm -hmm. be around a long time. It, it may, you know, they may shed some assets, they may, mm -hmm. you know, change. Um, I think a lot of people are looking for these gold companies to sort of clean, you know, their balance sheets up, mm -hmm. um, clean up their asset bases, and 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 maybe in a lot of ways to clean house mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know and, and drive some value back to the shareholder, mm -hmm. which I think is, uh, you know, maybe over the last decade, you know, mm -hmm. they were considered sort of a growth class, I think now we can almost look at them as a value class. Mm -hmm. So let's come to something positive to the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. What metals or what commodities do you rate to be hot, let's say 2013 and 14? Um, I remember doing an interview with Rick Rule, for example, he was talking about uranium. Yeah, he was he was saying our oh, gold will first go down, then it will come. What is your view or let's say the financial view on that? What, for what, what, is, what is hot for you? Well, uranium is hot for us. Mm -hmm. We actually, last year, um, we looked at uranium as a theme mm -hmm. and that was something that we really wanted to to press on mm -hmm. and we wanted to look specifically at uranium assets in Canada in the Athabasca Basin it's the highest grade uranium in the world and um, so we took a company public uh, called next gen mm -hmm. energy and one of our biggest holdings is is fission energy mm -hmm. and we're uh, we're very high on uranium mm -hmm. there's um, it, we hope at some point there will be a, a, a supply demand crunch mm -hmm. um, where there's less supply and more mm -hmm. demand and eventually we'll see the price of uh, uranium start to firm up and actually move off this base that it's been in for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And the sentiment itself, I think, probably bottomed mm -hmm. last year. I remember, uh, I think it was in the, the it, was, it, was, it was maybe March or so of last year on the cover of mm -hmm. The Economist, uh, they said uranium yeah. or nuclear energy, the failed yeah. dream. You know, and when you see those things, you know you're okay. getting to a bottom in the sentiment. So we yeah. started to look for assets and specifically in Canada. And uh, I think that's going to be a popular thing going forward. It's, um, there's not a lot of public companies left, so mm -hmm. the space is fairly um, uh, small, mm -hmm. which, which means it's you know, fairly easy to do your research mm -hmm. and do your homework. And there's some great analysts in Canada, mm -hmm. which uh, you know, I, I communicate with. Okay. And, and, you know, we don't have one specifically, but yeah, uh, yeah. out of Toronto, there's a, a okay. few really great analysts. Um, Let's talk a bit more, um, let, let's say worldwide, or let's say also countrywide. What uh, countries are your favorites? Uh, because we saw Bolivia is probably not a place to invest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Argentina is yeah. tricky. Yeah, what do you think about? Is uh, Canada, Canada the place to be? Australia or whatever, I don't know, Peru? But what, what countries do you like? Well, we always like Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. it just depending on the on the province itself and the jurisdiction, but mm -hmm. Peru, you mentioned Peru, and mm -hmm. Peru is another theme that we looked at last year. We absolutely love Peru, and we think there's huge upside there. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably one of the only uh, uh, countries in South America, if not the world, that small-scale mining, uh, you know, high-grade small-scale mining, mm -hmm. really works on a on a on a scalable level. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in in this new age that we're in, where gold prices have come down mm -hmm. and financing is difficult, mm -hmm. uh, people are going to start looking for companies that can actually make money producing gold. And directly and straight from the scratch. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and you, do you have an example for that? Uh, one of the ones that we uh, looked at last year did a, a, a large amount of due diligence on them and uh, we really, really liked and especially because of the management team was Inca One. Oh, and lovely. Uh, uh -huh. Inca One's a company that has uh, uh, three years of you know, on-the-ground experience in Peru. They've got a fantastic team. Uh, mm -hmm. Management owns about 30, per or management insiders own about 30% of the outstanding shares. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they sit in the same boat like every shareholder. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah, we always, you know, we're hoping that, uh, you know, when management owns that much stock, that their interests are aligned with shareholders. Exactly. Right? Uh -huh. And, and uh, you know, in, in this is a company that, uh, you know, we believe mm -hmm. has a, a great, chance at producing gold you know on a scalable level a small scale but mm -hmm. also scalable at a profit and actually generating value for its shareholders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. in Peru in Peru in Peru yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful so, uh, and, and yeah how would you rate then Peru on, on the scale politics stability yeah, because if, if you have such a small company working in there because they are not a Buenaventura or a Barrick or whatever so uh, how, how do you rate it within the system we do you think it's still good to work there oh we think it's fantastic we, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 one of those uh, countries where I think you know smaller is better mm -hmm. um, these big companies you know tend to not be able to fly below the radar screen and, mm -hmm. a, and, a, and a company like Inca one that mm -hmm. has 
three years experience in country. It's team does things the Peruvian way, we say. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've got a, a, a great opportunity to build something really special. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, when, when we visited Peru, actually, with Inca You've been there? Yeah, we've been okay. there. Um, we visited uh, Peru in January, and, and we, we talked to everybody from the Deputy Minister of Mines all the way down mm -hmm. to local people. Mm -hmm. And really, mining is huge. It, it, there's a, a huge amount of support for mining in the mm -hmm. country. There's uh, hundreds, if not thousands of years of, of history. Um, you know, for these people in mining mm -hmm. and mining specifically high grade, you know, gold and silver. And uh, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. You know, mm -hmm. and the country is a, it's a wonderful place. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's growing at about 6.5% mm -hmm. right now, GDP growth, um, cool. it yeah. politi it's politically stable. Yeah, yeah. And if you uh, go to Lima, you'll notice, I mean, there's a lot of new cars and fresh paint, mm -hmm. new buildings. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fantastic so place. That's a growing place. It's growing. a viable place, active viable. place. Great. Last question. Where do you see the gold price end of the year? <laughs> <laughs> gold price end of the year. Show that's me the crystal one. ball. <laughs> yeah, crystal ball. Let me see. Uh, you know, it's, uh, that's probably the hardest question. And we get that question all the time. Where is gold? And unfortunately, I'm not an expert. I'm not an analyst. Uh, yeah. But if I had to guess, I, I'd say it's, uh, it, it, we'll find a bottom here shortly mm -hmm. in the near term. And then we'll start to climb out of the hole. I don't think we'll rock it back up. But one thing I do know generally the equities themselves will rally before the commodities. So mm -hmm. I've been looking for those gold equities in that junior mining mm -hmm. space to probably have a, a, a rally here at some mm -hmm. point before the end of the year. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much, Brian. All the best. Thank and you. Uh, we will watch it carefully. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. It was Brian Henry, the broker of the year from PI Financial out of Vancouver. He gave us a nice insight into the market. 700 companies are underwater. We call them the walking deaths. So we will, or we have to watch out what is coming here. Things will change. And uh, of course, you heard it. Uranium is hot. We heard it's not the first time that we hear it. But uh, again, another professional really, um, yeah, said it to us and uh, contributed this to that. And uh, of course, gold is still hot. And you heard it. One of the topics is uh, in carbon in the gold sector. And in uranium, it's next gen and fission. So watch out for the companies, watch out for the sectors. It yeah, looks, it could even look better. And uh, enjoy the summer. Thanks and bye-bye from Munich, Jochen Steiger, Commodity TV. Ciao.